What's going on, people? We are Tottenham TV back here for yet another update. We are at 7 p.m. time of recording, so the clock really is ticking down. And after this update, you'll probably want to shut off your TV and um, not look at the transfer window anymore. But look, let's talk about Brennan Johnson first. Ali Gold says Brennan is now at Hotspur Way to do his medical. Sky Sports says that Tottenham offered Ange various forwards, but he was insistent on signing Brennan Johnson. The manager has wanted to sign him for a very long time. David Heitner says that Chelsea, Villa, West Ham and Brentford were amongst the clubs who showed interest, interest in Brennan Johnson during the transfer window. It does make me laugh when I hear uh, that Ange has been after him for such a long time when, you know, he's only been a manager for a month or two. He's wanted him his whole career, mate. <laughs> Our Yokohama, he wanted uh, Brennan Johnson. That's what they're saying. But look, very exciting. Um, at least we're getting one through the door, which you'll get into uh, later on. But um Look, he's not going to be signing in time for this weekend, unfortunately, but I think he's going to be a very useful option for us during the season. And I can't wait for him to be in a Spurs shirt because I just think he offers something very different to what we have already. I know it's a big outlay, but I think he's an exciting young player for me. Yeah, I, I totally agree. It's just frustrating now. We have to wait till after the international break to even get a glimpse of him, even come on off the bench or anything. It always works out this way at the end of the transfer window. International break just comes straight away. But uh, that's that. Let's talk about some other stories as well. Starting off with Davinson Sanchez. Football International says that PSV are pushing to sign Davinson before the end of the trance window. The club have scheduled a medical in the event they can reach an agreement with Tottenham to sign the centre-back. Yeah, the, ugh, this is the only one at the moment in terms of centre-backs. I mean, well, Tangang is already gone, but... Um... Sanchez looks like he's the only one we're getting offers for uh, between him and Dyer. Ho uh, for me, I would say hopefully we get um, uh, um, we get him out of the door. But unless we bring anyone in, then I don't know if we can sell him as much as I want to. Um, I've always said that if we get a good offer, I would sell Sanchez. But that's on the condition we can sign one and we can get someone in before the deadline. And at this current moment, it looks very unlikely. So all of a sudden, if we let Sanchez go and don't bring anyone in, um, then it's only literally Dyer as backup, which is a, a very scary thought in my opinion. Um, but if we do have some, someone lined up, I really do hope we can push this deal through. Yeah, I mean, uh, to get to this stage of the window and having only like Lloyd Kelly as your potential centre back that can come in, I mean, like, what are they playing at? Where are these? What have they been doing this whole window since signing Mickey Van der Ven? Where are the, all the options? nowhere where's the list where's like the list of center backs we should be going through uh in in this uh in this case and we shouldn't have left it until the last few hours of the deadline to be making moves for center backs and risking um at least our first half of the season till january where um look luckily we do have romero and van der ven playing well but if one of them does pick up an injury like van der ven threatened to against fulham you know he was limping in that game if that was romero always picks and, up yeah romero knocks you know he he gets suspension sometimes or picks up knocks as well with the way he plays because he's so bullish and aggressive so it is a bit of a worrying situation i can't lie um but if we do get an offer for davidson that satisfies us i expect i do expect us to accept it yeah i'm not sure at this stage anymore i i don't i don't think a deal for davidson gets done to be honest unless there's someone else to come in I don't think uh, a deal for Davinson gets done, but we'll see what happens with just a few hours left to go of the window. Let's talk about Lloyd Kelly now as Ali Gold says that Spurs deal for Bournemouth defender Lloyd Kelly is looking difficult at this moment. Tottenham need to get a centre-back out the door, but mainly it's because the Cherries are increasingly reluctant to sell the 24-year-old. And this is what happens, especially for like Premier League clubs who are not desperate for the money. It's like, why would they sell a player that they're going to have use for during the season at this stage of a window when there's no time to get anyone else in? Yeah, it's always difficult. That's why I'm always against. Despair. Like I understand the um, tactic of waiting to the end of the window to drive prices down when teams are desperate to sell. But if you're going for um, teams or players who are well-valued at their club, you're never going to get a good price right at the end of the window. The only way you do that is if, like, let's say we're going for a player, like, say, Tosin, who I, I like, I don't know why that's like not on the table at the moment. Let's say a Tosin, like I understand waiting until late in the window because he's got a year left in his contract and he's going to go on a freeze so, and they're probably going to want to sell. So yeah, you can wait to the end of the window and try and get a better price. But for someone like Kelly or even a Brendan Johnson, like I, like what was the need like in, in waiting to the end of the window to sign Johnson? Because we just paid the fee that we were always going to pay essentially. 
eventually. So I didn't understand why I wait till deadline. And same with this. Uh, he's, uh, um, they like him at Bournemouth. They, they're, not, they're not desperate to sell him. He's got a con long contract, um, young English player. So they're only going to demand, if anything, they're probably going to demand a bit more money because they're selling him at the end of the window because there's no time to replace him. So it was always going to be a difficult deal unless they get um, like a, a dyer agrees to go there uh, on um, going the other way. And maybe they, they would be more capable of agreeing that deal. But right now, if we're looking for a cheap deal, it seems though they're not going to give us one. I think like this centre back situation of getting a backup centre back just stinks of incompetence. I mean, like they they know they could have got it done earlier on in the window, but they've waited, they've waited, they've waited, they've waited, and nothing gets done at the end of the day. And it's so frustrating. We all came into this window saying we need at least two centre backs at the absolute minimum, and we've got one, Mickey Van de Ven, and fair play, he looks like a really good signing, really good. And I couldn't have hoped for him uh, to be, you know, as good as he is. But it just like, now we're just going to be relying on Sanchez and Dyer again uh, for another season for at least till January. I do think that maybe in January, if Tosin doesn't go to Monaco in these last few hours, that we can, can get a maybe even cheaper deal for Tosin in January um, instead of them him leaving for free. But what do we do if Van der Ven and, and um, or Romero pick up an injury from now until January? We're completely screwed. And we could have got rid of Sanchez. We actually had offers for Sanchez. Ren have come in for bids, which we've we've which we've turned away. I understand maybe the dire one's a bit more complicated because he he seems to be digging his heels in. But Sanchez is willing to leave. We've got an offer in. Yes, maybe you want a bit more. You want the twelve million there, only offering nine or seven, whatever it is. But sometimes you just got to bite the bullet to, for the long term uh, for the for the benefit of the club. And I feel like we haven't done that. We've decided to wait out on the Sanchez deal because we. We want the right fee which is literally a few more million and now we're risking keeping him and, and a player who's probably not even happy to stay and a player we don't really want and now we're in this situation where we could have got rid of him earlier in the window we didn't and now he's probably going to stay and we're not going to get our targets and it's right. just a ridiculous situation i don't understand when like you're looking at dyer as well we had loan offers in from dyer from burnley like why are we not treating dyer the same way as regulon we're literally letting regulon go for no fee a month, uh, a loan spell till the end of the season, plus a break clause in the middle of that loan spell. We're like bending over backwards to help Man United. But then another player, Eric Dyer, who's not been in one squad, not even a cup squad, when we played our second team, and we're not letting him go on a loan. I just don't understand it. Doesn't it make sense. makes no sense. And when it's crucial, we get him out as well. It's like a regular uh, yes, we want it, like preferably we want him out and it's a good thing that he's out, but, but, but we have our left-backs semi-sorted. We weren't really looking for another left-back. But centre-backs is so crucial. We need another one through the door to make sure that we're covered in that area. And it was so crucial that we allowed uh, Dyer to get to um, even a loan deal. We allow him out, out of the squad so we have that space. And we decided not to do it. And we've left ourselves in this situation. I think it's a ridiculous, ridiculous decision from the, from the hierarchy. Yeah. Totally agree. But let's move on. Let's talk about Pierre Emo Hoybiard now. Matty Moretto says that Hoybier is far from signing for Atletico Madrid. Tottenham rejected the first offer and Atletico haven't presented a second one. Pierre Emo Hoybier to Atletico transfer has just fallen through. No agreement has been reached with Tottenham. David Heitner says Spurs hope to move Pierre Emo Hoybier, but he turned down the chance to go to Fulham. And as the hours ticked down to the deadline, he was expected to stay put. Ditto with Eric Dyer, who Postacoglu has frozen out. Spurs' difficulty in shifting Hoiberg has made it hard for them to take Conor Gallagher from Chelsea. Fabrizio Romano says that negotiations between Tottenham and Atletico for Hoiberg are currently off. Spurs rejected the opening bid as it's not including an obligation to buy cause to buy despite reports. And Paul O'Keefe says no agreement between the two clubs. Spurs insistent on obligatory uh, purchase. Atletico couldn't come up with a satisfactory offer for Tottenham Hotspur. Yeah, this one I'm, I'm not, I am annoyed about because I would rather have gotten Hoybe out the door and got, put, um, brought in a Conor Gallagher, but it, it doesn't bother me as much. I still think Hoybe is a good player, and I know he had a bad game on Tuesday night, but I still think he can contribute. I'm more comfortable with Hoybe coming in into the eleven than I am like a Sanchez or a Dyer. So I'm not too unhappy about it. It is, it is annoying, and I did get excited about the prospect of replacing with Conor Gallagher. So. To have that excitement deflated is, is frustrating. But this one, I'm not going to be overboard about in terms of my disappointment. Yeah, I mean, the main frustrations come from the centre-back for me. I mean, with Hoybier, I, I think it would have been best probably to move him on. It seemed like for everyone to see that he wanted to move on. We wanted to move him on, but we just couldn't agree a deal, which is surprise, surprise. 
Um, and the Conor Gallagher thing, I think he just fits the system and fits what we want to do so much better than Pierre, to be honest. So, I mean, ideally, I would have liked to see Hoybier leave, but that doesn't seem the case. Maybe something can change from now until the end of the window, but I don't see that being a likely occurrence. So, uh, and very I think frustrating. It, and I think it is the right decision. If you're not getting a good offer for him, like I wouldn't, I wouldn't just let him go on loan. I, I think we should sell. We should be getting a good fee, and we should be selling him. Yes, maybe you could argue we should compromise on that fee if we're demanding thirty million. Maybe if a twenty-five million comes in, I, I, we should accept it. But if they're not even offering a fee and they're just saying take him on loan, I think that is right to reject it. To be fair, yeah, it is. But you know, he's going to have to go at some point, and the the price is just going to go down and down and down. But we're um, not getting a fee. Yeah, I know. In this mm. in this situation, yeah, I completely agree with that. But what I'm saying is, is that. The price that they're holding out for right now is about 40 million, something like that. Um, I don't think you get anywhere close to that by next summer. Probably you're getting around 20 million, 25 million next summer. So, I mean, you've got to come up with some sort of compromise with Atletico Madrid. I think even lower your price. I think it may be if, even if you lower your price, some sort of compromise can be met, but it doesn't seem Spurs want to do that. But if you're getting 20 million next summer, why accept 20 million this summer? You know what I mean? Because we can move on and um, bring Gallagher into the squad and move him out. But they're not, I'm saying they're not even accepting a fee. So, sorry, they're not even um, putting a fee at the moment. They just want to, they want a loan deal. Uh, I think there's a conversation to be had if they're putting an obligation to buy in there, there's a conversation. But if they're not going to put one in, I think it's right for Tottenham to reject the offer. Yeah, for me, I would just prefer to move move players on uh, that we don't think are going to properly suit the system, that players don't want to be here, and um, and bring in a target that we thought can sit, fit the system better. But I understand that you know just loaning him out without an obligation or, or an option to buy is not really the way we want to go, and I accept that, and I, I think that's probably a good move. But I think if we pushed it a bit and offered a bit of a lower obligation, I think there may have been more of a conversation to have. Yeah, we'll never know. We'll see. Maybe, and maybe there will be a compromise before the end of the window. But as as long as there's no obligation, I don't think there's a conversation to have. Conor Gallagher up next. Simon Jones saying that Tottenham target Conor Gallagher will stay at Chelsea after being priced out of a move by the Blues. And Nazar Kinsella saying that doubts are beginning to grow about Tottenham's pursuit of Conor Gallagher. Player isn't pushing for a move. So it seems like um, this is all dead, to be honest. Yeah, that makes sense as well. Why would he? I, I didn't expect him to push for the move. I think it's one of those things where if the club is pushing him, then maybe he would accept it. But as I've said before, he was captain on Tuesday. He, he said um, he sent an interview how proud he was of being captain he's a Chelsea fan so I expect him to probably in an ideal world want to stay but it's one of those things where if the club are pushing you then you just got to, you have a decision to make and obviously this deal ain't we're not going to be pushing this deal unless Hoybier happens and that's not happening at the moment so this, do, this deal looks yeah completely dead dead in the water unfortunately as much as I want it to happen Let's talk about Tangi Undombele. Sky Sports' Lyle Thomas says that Galatasaray remain an option for Undombele, but it's not time-sensitive today as the Turkish window remains open till the 15th of September and he wants to play Champions League football. And I guess Galatasaray is probably the only place he's going to get it, but we have heard throughout the window that he doesn't want to move to Turkey. Hmm. So it's going to be interesting to see how this one pans out. Obviously, no one in Europe uh, was interested in taking. We heard rumours of Inter Milan yesterday, but that... Nothing seemed to have materialised with that. So I guess it's another waiting game in the next two weeks to see if Galatasaray come in with a bid or anything. I think it's just going to be interesting to see where the state of the squad is come the end of the window, whether he's actually in the 25-man squad or not. I doubt it. Um, it depends. It, it depends. If, a deal, if there's a deal for Sanchez happening... Then he then there then he will be in the squad or or if there's a deal for Dyer but if they're both if Dyer and uh, and sorry if let if we assume Loris is leaving whatever happens uh, and he's not going to be in the squad then we need to get rid of one more European for him to be in the squad and it's whether Dyer and one of Dyer or Sanchez is still going to be here or even Brian Hill maybe that was the last minute deal for him but if one if all three of them stay then Ndombele is probably going to be the guy to fall out and if he's not in the squad then surely he sees the situation like I'm not I don't even have have the possibility to play so I might as well just go on loan to Turkey and and and, and pl actually play some football but if um, one of Dyer, Sanchez or Hill does leave before the window and then he actually is included in the squad maybe it changes things for him in terms of whether how desperate he is to go to Turkey or not yeah the way I see it playing out is uh, Dyer, Sanchez and Hill are here for the season in the squad and Ndombele uh, probably um, you know is not in the squad and not selected I mean as much as Eric Dyer hasn't been in a squad, neither has Tangi and Dombele, but Eric Dyer is in a position where we're lacking um, cover 
So yeah. I think Eric Dyer has got to be there if he is part of the squad just as a last resort for cover. Undombele at the end of the day, we've got so many players in that position, so there's no need for him to be in the squad. No, I agree. I, I think if 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 um, Ange is picking between who to keep in if they all stay, I think Tongi is the one to uh, to not be selected because we are we are stocked to midfield. We don't need him, and he's and he's not happy with the attitude. I'm just saying, if there are, if the one of them does leave and he actually is in the squad, then I don't know. I don't know if, if that changes things for him or not in can, terms of him going see any of them leaving. I don't know. I still got a sneaky feeling about Sanchez, but we'll have to see. I don't know. Uh, I think at the moment it's looking like they're all going to stay. Mm, yeah. And let's finish off talking about Eric Dyer. As Charlie Eccleshare says, that Dyer expected to stay at Spurs despite being offered, among others, uh, Forrest and Bournemouth in conversations about Johnson and Kelly. Uh, one year left on his deal and the expectation is absolutely that he'll leave on a free uh, most likely to a, a team abroad in 2024 Daniel Levy had been hoping to move the defender on as he only has one year left in his contract despite being offered to Bournemouth and Nottingham Forest and no deal is going to be done for Eric Dyer. and Ali Gold says uh, there's been no late interest for Undombele Dyer or Lloris and if Postacoglu is uh, not going to register them then they're going to have to come to some sort of solution or sit out the last year of their contract without playing and uh, you know what I mean like if this is if, if it's going to come to that then you may as well just like just let them go on loan or cancel contracts like there's no point just keeping them around here not in the squad and just hanging around the training ground for no reason. I completely agree. Um, and, I, and I'd love in a perfect world, even even if we don't sign a centre-back, part of me just wants to even cast, still cancel his contract just so and give Phillips or Dorrington a chance rather than persist with Dyer. But I, I, I have a feeling if they, if they don't feel like Phillips or Dorrington are completely ready, I don't think you can cancel the contract if we haven't brought one, anyone, anyone in because otherwise there's no cover. I think if it's up to me, if it was my personal opinion, I'll just roll the dice and go Phillips and Dorrington. But Ange's got, you know, Ange's got responsibility to the squad and whether he feels like even if Dyer isn't good enough, at the end of the day, he's our cover and that's it. Like, we have no one else. So, unfortunately, if we haven't brought anyone in, well, you can't just cancel it because you might need him. Yeah, exactly. So... It looks like the uh, transfer window is ending on a bit of a whimper. But when you look at the whole uh, landscape of the transfer window, we needed to get so many players out. But realistically, we've only sold two of them. Yeah. Potentially, potentially one of them, with ta uh, one more with Tanganga, might turn into an obligation. But Kane, Winks and Tanganga, maybe, is the ones that have been sold. Everyone else... I mean, it's been a bit of a shit show, hasn't it? Yeah, and we're literally going to put ourselves in the same situation in a year's time, all these loan deals. So it's going to be the same situation. We haven't really sorted any of those situations out. We've still got players as well um, who haven't moved at all, that you're not even on loan, who are still in the squad, which is not great. And look, I do understand we had a lot to do this summer and... It was not feasible to get all of it done. But the amount we have got done in, in regards to outgoings just isn't really sufficient, to be honest. It's not, very not good enough. Yeah, very underwhelming. I really thought we were going to get a lot more out than we have been able to get. I am pretty happy with the incomings in terms of the personnel. I, I do like who we've brought in. Have we got enough? Yeah, mate, look, I'm, I'm less unhappy with the, with the incomings. I think we've done pretty well. Could we have gotten another centre-back? 100%. Could we have gotten another midfielder? 100%. Um, I agree with those things. But I think in terms of like the workload of incomings we needed and what we got, it's like satisfactory. But in terms of the outgoings, what we needed and what we got, it's completely unsatisfactory. Yeah, for me, I think missing out on Gift Orban as well was a big sense of frustration for me. I thought we should have brought him in, especially for the money being touted about for him as well. I thought it was a bit of a no-brainer, but that didn't come to pass. Uh, the defensive situation for me is the biggest thing. Um, absolutely. like There's no reason why we couldn't have brought in another centre-back. No reason whatsoever. No. So I think that's a big failing um, from this transfer window. Obviously, the, like I said before, big, another big failing is not being able to get these players out. It feels as though like we were just like so calm about the situation and just expecting bids to come in and then just scrambling around for the last 24 hours trying to get these players out. That's what it feels like. Yeah. Look, I, get, I credit the club for getting Van der Vengs. I think he's a very good signing. But how they've hand, look, knowing how our defensive situation last season, which was 63 goals conceded, and the amount of work that was needed to do that back line, just Van der Ven was never just going to be enough. And we, and we had opportunities to get rid of Sanchez and we rejected the bid. We had opportunities to allow Dyer to go on loan and we rejected the bid. So they got nowhere else to look at but themselves. And they can't sit here at the end of the window and then saying, oh, we just had no offers and all that stuff. It's like, no, you had offers. You could have just bitten the bullet and 
then taken a bit less than you would have wanted or not a deal that would have suited you for the better of the squad. You didn't do that. And now we're in the situation that we are. And I have to look squarely at you for the, that situation because you had opportunities to deal with it, uh, especially earlier in the window. And you didn't deal with it. And if now, let's say Van der Ven is, on, is now called up for Holland. Let's say he gets injured for Holland. There's nothing we can do about that. And all of a sudden we're relying on these centre-backs now. Back to square one. And we're back to square one. So... If, if that's the case, I can only look at the high. Where else can I look but the hierarchy? There's nowhere else to look for blame for that. Yeah. They just better hope. They, you, they better cross all the fingers they have that all our centre-backs, uh, that Van der Ven and stay fit. Because if not, it's going to be a real um, bad situation. Yeah. And especially for Ange's first season as well, you'd think they want to give him the best opportunity to really succeed. I guess the thing that they do have going for them is that, you know, we're going to probably play the least amount of football that we've played in many years. So I guess the need for a, a second string team is, is diminished as opposed to maybe last season being in the Champions League and what have you. And the risk of injury is maybe lessened as well because there's less games. But you just know injuries are going to crop, crop up throughout the season. It always happens and it always will happen. And if you don't have adequate cover, then you'll just go back to playing the crap that we had last season. And that's just the reality of the situation. But there is about three and a half hours left of this window. Things can happen right until the deadline. But I find it very hard to believe that anything will happen from now until the end. Yeah, a lot to do in very little time. So the odds are definitely against us if we want something to happen. But you never know. You never know on deadline day. Things happen. I'm I'm even looking now like Forrest have just made a bid right now for a centre-back and maybe they're getting something done. So you never know truly if it's over. But at the moment, it's definitely looking bleak when it comes to what we truly want, which is a centre-back. All right. Well, there you have it. That is your Tottenham update. We might be back for one more before the deadline. But let me know in the comment section below your thoughts regarding all the news stories we've brought to you today. Like, subscribe and comment. And as always, come, come on you Spurs. Spurs.